Hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Nami Kawo, a member of FYAJ. As I do not speak English fluently, I will be participating in a synthesized voice. Today, I would like to characterize the day this Rua interpretation and fine tuning. When you think of AI, you might imagine something that gives you data and produces results. Take LAPS, for example, which contractor will LAPS? But AI is actually not only about that, it is also about interpreting the model itself and calculating the degree of influence of each feature. By applying techniques for interpreting models, it may be possible to detect minute changes that are beyond human reach without missing them. For example, it may be possible to detect at an early stage that the lapse ratio has increased only in certain areas. First, we will experiment with LightGBN, a model that appeared in 2016 and is often used by Capital and others. In this case, we will use dummy data that mimic lapse. We will not go into details, but as you can see in the graph, the lapse ratio is higher when the number of elapsed years is 0 and 10. I will now perform the training and calculate the feature importance. There are two main ways to interpret the model, by interpreting the model directly or by actually inserting data into the model. The method of actually putting in the data may not be very suitable in this case, because we want to see the difference in the data. This is one of the major advantages of using LightGBN, since regular neural networks cannot interpret the model directly. Please note that feature importance is not a causal indicator, but simply a measure of importance. Results The feature importance shows that the effect of elapsed time is very high, it is natural. At first glance, this could be used to analyze what is affecting lapse. It is tempting to calculate and compare the results every year. In reality, however, it is difficult to use this for analysis because of the large variation. This time, the data was separated and trained twice, but the feature importance is slightly different. This makes it difficult to tell whether the difference in feature importance from the previous year is a mere variation or whether there is actually a difference. I believe that fine-tuning techniques can be used to solve the aforementioned problem. In a nutshell, fine-tuning is the process of retraining or fine-tuning a model that has already been trained by adding new data to it. By fine-tuning and training a model used in the previous year, one can expect that the model will not be significantly different. However, since like GBM is a boosting model, fine-tuning may not be fine-tuning. For reasons of scale, I will omit the details, but this is usually the technique used for neural nets. However, neural nets cannot calculate feature importance. So, do we have to give up fine-tuning? In recent years, table data-specific neural network models have emerged, and the situation is changing every year. TabNet is a typical model, and while it is a neural network model, it can calculate feature importance. So let's get started and run TabNet. Note that the runtime is very long. As with LightGBM, it seems that feature importance is too valuable to be useful by itself. Now, let's do fine tuning and analyze the difference in feature importance. Let's assume a case in which a specific region deteriorated very slightly in the following year and put in dummy data in which the influence of area code has increased. Since Tabnet is fine-tuned with a lower warning weight, not much difference is seen before and after fine-tuning. Since we can see that the importance of area code has increased, we can analyze what is happening from here on using a traditional and powerful analysis such as Excel's pivot table. The result of feature importance changes each time it is run, making it difficult to capture the changes. By using fine-tuning this topnet, fractuations can be suppressed and changes in feature importance can be easily captured. Actual surrender and lapse rates can change dynamically due to interest rate levels, product-specific options, third-party products, and various other factors. Further improvement of this technique may enable us to respond to new fluctuations and risks in a dynamic environment before they have a significant impact. 
On the other hand, the data we used this time had a relatively small number of columns. The larger the number of columns, the more likely it is that double rounding will occur, making the analysis more difficult. Since the number of columns in real data can be very large, techniques such as feature selection techniques may need to be used in conjunction. There are countless other ideas that can be used to analyze important features, for example the shock method could be used. I believe that there is no silver bullet in analysis, therefore it may be a good idea to learn a variety of methods. In particular, the field of data science continues to advance day by day. For actuaries who are battling against risks, keeping abreast of new technologies and techniques may be the bridge to tomorrow. Thank you for watching. 